All right, looks like we've got a pretty good roll up. So we might get started so that um, we do st uh, stay on track with time. Um, so hello everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Susan. I am um, based at CQU on the Rockhampton campus in central Queensland. And um, I uh, normally, the hat I wear is um, education lecturer. And uh, so I'm, my students have just started their placement out in school. So it's always an interesting time for everybody. Um, before we go any further, I just want to um, acknowledge that I'm standing on Drumble land and acknowledge the traditional owners, past, present and future and um, welcome you from whatever land you are currently standing on and thank those um, uh, traditional owners on, on your land. Um, today we're just going to, um, each presenter will have approximately 15 minutes. If you have any questions for them, please just put them into the chat uh, box. I'll keep an eye on that and then use um, those to um, guide the questions at the end of each session. Um, please have your, your phone and your and or your mic on you um, just to help with feedback and unexpected interruptions that we often get. Um, presenters, I'll give you a warning uh, when you've got two minutes to go, just so you know if you're on time. And um, but please, everybody, you know, ask questions or um, if you have a lot of questions or more uh, wanting a more detailed response, um, then I encourage you to, to follow up with each of the presenters separately um, after today's session. Uh, so we are starting with Anne. Um, so Anne, very um, welcome. And I thought because our session is all about educational technology, I um, have asked each of the presenters to tell me a piece of home-based technology that they would like not want to live without, um, but they had to exclude their TV, their computer and their phone. Um, and so Anne had a little bit of a debate as to whether um, her iPad or her wine fridge were of equal importance to her. I'm going to say probably fairly similar for some people. Um, and on that note, over to you, Anne. Lovely. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. Great. I'll go ahead and share our presentation for today. Okay. So can you see that on the big screen? Fantastic. Excellent. Great. Well, my name's Anne, um, Anne Braun from the School of Access Education. And I've been working with a team of people uh, this year on developing our new undergraduate core unit, our first term core unit, which will, as part of CQU Renew, I've been working with Laura Baker on developing the curriculum from the School of Business and Law, and also um, the clever people from Learning Design and Innovation, Zoe Allen and Nick Lawler are here in the meeting today, and also um, Faith Appleton, who's the project lead, and of course, uh, the director, Kate Ames. So let's talk about, we've called it today's session Pedagogy Meets H5P, which is about educational curriculum meeting marrying up with technology. So um, what I wanted to talk about is how the, um, oops, I'm just going to get this off my screen, right, is how the CQU curriculum refresh goals have guided our curriculum and technology um, development. So, as we know, the um, one of the these are the goals on the on the screen here. Looking for a refreshed approach that included student centred learning with real time feedback. Now, H five P interactive activities enable us to do that. Um, and this presentation later on, Zoe um, will take us through some of those H five P activities that do encourage student engagement. They um, require student interaction, and they have checks for learning throughout throughout the Moodle um, to make sure that students are getting um, real-time feedback and reflecting on their on their knowledge as they're working through the content. Also um, the opportunity to develop student-centered curriculum that's based around authentic uh, real-world opportunities. As part of our curriculum, we've also linked into many other areas within the university, embedding information from the wider CQ Uni um, community, embedding information about work integrated learning, about social innovation, about Indigenous engagement and about 
cultural competence um, involved in um, CQU global projects as well. So um, looking to extend the student curriculum to uh, engage with the wider CQU curriculum. Another one of the goals there of CQU Renew or CQU Refresh curriculum is around um, delivering holistic student support, the, the one in blue there. Holistic student support, we've developed an A to Z list trying to link into all of the student support services within the university, um, enabling the students to develop their own MyCQU support list where they can record access to all of these links. Um, because as we know in the uni, often in first term for undergraduates, um, they don't find our support services until the wheels are starting to fall off. So, so front loading this information in, in first term is a really great uh, retention strategy. Excuse me, um, Anne. I'm yes. really sorry to interrupt, but yes. I just uh, there was a comment in the chat box. Uh, people who are not from CQU um, um, would just appreciate just a little bit of a background. Oh, great. Okay, certainly. So as part of um, CQU Renew, which is a project for 2020 here at CQU, um, we're refreshing our curriculum. And one of those initiatives is developing a new first term core unit for undergraduates uh, to attend. It's a multidisciplinary core unit. So it doesn't matter what uh, course you're enrolled in, but there's a, um, a series of um, content that will really help them set them up for success in their study. So I'll go into that content in a little bit more detail in a moment. I hope that's enough background. These are the goals of that CQU curriculum refresh. Um, so the blue there and the final one is personalising the, the learning journey for students. So through this curriculum refresh, we've modularised the, um, the unit within this curriculum. So rather than working through in a 12 week based um, term time content, we developed five modules to cluster the information for the students and personalising it where the students can do a choose your own adventure type um, learning for what suits their learning style, where within those modules, they're able to um, choose the order that they complete the topics and complete the activities, as long as they complete the full module um, throughout the term. So this, this content and the experience in this first term um, core unit is obviously one of our major uh, retention strategies. And as we're developing, myself and Laura developing the curriculum and then the learning design innovation team developing the technology, we've been very mindful that these students are first termers, their first um, term to higher education. So the support and the content and the interactions are, are very, um, supportive and encouraging, making sure that, you know, the students feel competent um, with their online learning and making sure that the learning feels relevant to them. And there's lots of, you know, reflection opportunities and, and linkages to their own personal career path along the way. So, um, oops, moving to the next slide. For some reason I can't get to the next slide. Um, so, as I said, we've developed the curriculum into five core modules, moving on to the Be Different platform. So, those modules are there. That's how we've put the curriculum together. And I'm going to hand to Zoe now from Learning Design and Innovation, who'll talk about how this tile format has helped marry the um, curriculum that we've developed into the um, Be Different platform using H5P software. Thanks, Zoe. Hey, okay, thanks, Anne. Um, I'll just wait for Anne to stop sharing. sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. It's nice to see some familiar faces in the room today. Now, I am not a big fan of looking at people when I am presenting. So, Susan, if you could just give me a, a yay, if you can see my screen, please. I just have a yes. Yes, tile display. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So, for those of you who are um, not familiar with uh, CQU platform, this is our Moodle page, which is, of course, a tile layout. So, what is H5? Um, what is our tile layout, of course? So, 
as you can see, it's a grid looking a, um, display, which helps uh, students to navigate through their content. Of course, they can open up the tiles. It's very animated. Once they click on a tile, they can see all their content, which is displayed down below in a lovely little display window. They can cross out and navigate through to their other tiles. Now, previously we did have a display that was very um, linear. So it was just a section here that you can open and close, open and close, which is, you know, serves a purpose of course, but the tile layout is quite fresh. It's quite relatable to other platforms that the students would be looking at through, um, outside of CQU. And it has some really good key features as well. So obviously we've got our animation that helps us, you know, click open and shut. It's got some very nice um, uh, icons here that we can select through an icon library, which is presented in our background when we go to develop. We can change our colors of our tiles. We can hide our tiles like we used to with our, um, sections so that the students don't have to see what we're working on in the background and of course we have this progress bar up the top up here as well so we have some activities here within our structure that we ask our students to click on to say that they have read them and that that will then prompt their progress so that they can see what they are missing out on and just help them to monitor how they are going when they are reading their content. The tile structure is mobile responsive as well. So it adapts to different screen sizes and orientations, and it's easy to switch into tiles from using other formats without changing so much of the course content as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> so let's have a look at some of this H5P that um, Anne was mentioning before. Now, H5P is a um, abbreviation for HTML5 package, which is an activity that aims um, to make life a little bit easier when it comes to creating that HTML5 content within Moodle. It's a really simple uh, platform that most of us can use. And I'm just going to showcase here a course presentation which is a h5p activity it's it's a really um fun and interactive uh, activity that you can select and it's one of my favorites because there's a lot of um, other things that you can build into a course presentation it's a great way of looking at a whole bunch of content if you've got a lot of stuff that you need to present to a student but you don't want to have that um, uh, that scroll on effect of you know displaying more and more and more content for them if you are familiar with a PowerPoint, which a lot of people are, you will see that its display is very similar to a PowerPoint presentation. And in the back end, when you're creating a course presentation, all of the um, wording and the, the design and how you go about creating that content is all very similar to a PowerPoint. Um, you know, they, they uh, refer to uh, objects as slides, uh, the images are all, uh, the format is all sort of very similar. So it's it's got that similarity. With the start of our modules, we have a course presentation in all of them, and it just gives the students a bit of an overview as to what that module, what they are to expect in that module. They've got an introduction, which of course gives them the breakdown of the topics. We've got our learning objectives. We've got some assessment information. And then of course, within our course presentation, we have some um, activities as well, which is just that interactive component. I know it's just a, a little flip card, but it just prompts the students to move away from that um, reading and into something a little bit different. So I'm going to show you now a course presentation that I use as an example. This course presentation I'm using today, just to show you a little bit more about our content. So it sort of puts it into a, uh, an example as to how you can use this to actually display and teach from. So we have our introduction slide, 
we move over and we've got some questions, which is some checks for learning. Um, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? You can click an answer, you can check it. It'll give you that um, animation star to say, yes, you're correct. And then you can move on to the next slide. You have other elements that you can build in there, like a drop and drag, and you can check and it will give you that slide, that um, prompting. In this particular slide, I have some uh, questions uh, and we also have a video that I've popped in here as well, which is the national anthem, for, national anthem for France. And then of course, some questions relevant to that as well. The next slide is a interactive video. So we have a video that we've embedded from YouTube in here. The students can click on it and they can watch to a certain point. And then when they get to this point here, they are prompted with a question that will then be relevant to that that content that they've already watched. How many Excuse tourists? me, Zoe. Yes. Um, two minutes to go. Oh, thanks, Susan. Um, yeah, so that'll prompt them with a little question. Now, at the end of their presentation is a um, little results screen, and that will just give them a summary of the questions or the activities that they've completed throughout the presentation and give them a bit of a tally up as to how they went. And of course, there's some options here, which you can turn off in the back end. If you don't want to show solutions to the students, you can turn these off. And it gives them an opportunity to retry as well. So if they see that they've done horribly, they can go back and, and give it another crack. Um, this little embed icon down the bottom down here will present me with an iframe, which I can, of course, copy. And then I can put that in the back end of my HTML when I create a label. And that will then display my course presentation in the front end, like it has done here. So my students will be able to open it up and see my course presentation without having to click on that little icon that just says H5P, like I've done over here. So it's pretty exciting and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of activities within, course pres within H5P that you can utilize. Now, of course, uh, if you're a CQU staff member, we have a brilliant tutorial page here that has been created by one of our senior project officers for digital learning, Daryl Clare. I'm just going to pop that into the chat if I can find the chat. So if you could, that would be fantastic because yeah. unfortunately we need to finish up. Oh, yes. Okay. I'll pop that into the chat. Now for our other... other um, non-CQ staff members, we have a H5P org website, which I'll also pop into the chat. And that'll give you an overview of some of the other activities that you can have a look at. And that's me in a nutshell. Thank you very much for your time today, people. Fabulous. Um, thank you for um, no, well, no longer sharing your screen. Um, that, that was really interesting because like many others, I'm in the middle of um, doing the, the changeover to uh, with to the tile system, and I have to admit, it got my um, thoughts spinning of, okay, what can I do and how can I do it? So I can see that there's a few comments in the chat box, but they're more just, you know, thank you very much. It was valuable. Are there any questions for either Anne or Zoe, please? If you have a microphone, feel free to just speak up. Um, there was a question that came through, who's the best person to contact regarding the content development? Yeah, look, that's a really good question. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of designers um, with LDI, Nick and myself. Nick's in the room with me today. So Nick and I are working quite fanatically um, creating content and developing a lot of this H5P activities within Moodle. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. But, look, I do recommend and I will um, pop down our email um, address for you to get in touch with our, all of our designers because each of us are broken up and we do serve different courses, uh, different departments, I mean. So um, 
you know, um, I work with the professional practice. Nick sort of floats amongst a lot of different departments, but we do have structure. So I will pop that in the link. And if you do need a help with any of your content and any of your creating, get in touch with us because that's what we love to do. We, we design. So, yeah, Thanks. I'll pop that in there soon. Thank you, Zoe. And if anyone's got any questions around embedding the curriculum content of that particular core unit in, like Susan, you were saying about the, um, you know, you're currently working on that and, and people are across many schools, I'll put my email in the chat as well. So fantastic, um, you can get in touch there. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you um, to all the presenters plus those um, on the scenes. It's, it's always exciting to see some new ideas.